here's one of the things I always try to tell my kids when they get upset about stuff. I look at them and I'm like, should this be something that you're getting worked up about? Is this something that should be making you so upset? I tell them this because I, for whatever reason, cannot stop getting upset about the Madden ratings, which dropped this week and went out there and once again showed a lack of respect for some Bears players. Now, I understand there's some pro football focused stuff and people want to denigrate our offensive line because there's a lot of unknowns. You want to take shots at Justin Fields because he hasn't proven it yet. Fine. I'll live with that. But you cannot have been watching football over the last couple of years and seen players like David Montgomery and Darnell Mooney and not understand that they are some of the best in the NFL. And if we can, I'd like to point out a tweet uh, made by my guy, Chris Maltby, uh, who pointed out this, and I, I I appreciate Chris pointing this out. Darnell Mooney has a Madden rating of 79. Terry McLaurin has a rating of 91 overall. Mooney, more receptions, more yards, one less touchdown than McLaurin. Both played all 17 games. So don't be like, oh, McLaurin didn't play. No, they all played. Actually, McLaurin started 17 games. Mooney started just 12. Both were in some terrible offensive systems. And I'm not going to sit here and say that McLaurin is not a great player. I like him a lot. I was morose when he re-upped with the commanders. Why would you want to do that? I was hopeful that he would come to Chicago and be the number two behind Mooney. But that's the thing. Like, I'm, I think McLaurin's good. I'm not ready to concede that he's better than Mooney, not by a long shot. So I don't know. I need to stop getting worked up. I guess what I will concede is that it's time to start the show, Sammy. Let's do it. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast with Adam Ray. Trying to cut it back. Justin Fields making magic happen. There goes Fields. Touchdown. The Sickest Chicago Bears and Fantasy Football Podcast. Sports entertainment like no other. It's going to be sick. Welcome to the Sick Podcast with Adam Rank. I am on one today. I am fired up and ready to go, probably because of our guest who's going to be joining us here in just a matter of moment, moments. Annie Agar is going to be joining. Oh, I can't wait to, to talk some football with her and uh, talk about what's going on in the NFL and all that good stuff. But, you know, I also, again, I want to go, listen, David Montgomery. Like, I, I don't know. Like, again, I don't want to be too worked up about Madden ratings and everything like that. But David Montgomery is such a good player. Like, you cannot watch the film and not understand how good he is. Now you want to be like, oh, his offensive line's not good. That doesn't hurt his Madden rating. But, again, these are things I got to take the life lessons. You know, I'm on the Instagram looking up parroting pages like learning how to deal. I, I need to use those lessons uh, on myself. But, you know, enough about that. I do want to tell you this, though. AM 1530 WCKG is the Chicago home of the SICK Podcast. Every Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, we are on, or excuse me, 2 p.m. Central, uh, we are on the air. And immediately after us, Olin Krutz, Jason McKee, the no-name pod, follows a, a power two hour, two hours of Bears talk. Two hours. So if you're commuting, if you if you live in Sandwich, and you're driving to the driving from the city, and you got two hours to kill, tune into AM fifteen thirty WCKG, the Sick Podcast, the No Name Pod, dude. We got you covered for Bears Talk, and we appreciate you joining us and being a part of the show. Also, uh, if I might bring this up too, we all love to binge, but privacy is a big deal too. Norton VPN keeps your information encrypted. So you never have to worry about your IP or location getting out. Use the code SICKADAM to receive a huge discount on a two-year plan plus one month free. And I will let you know that I use the product myself. And it is a it has been very beneficial for me. So uh, I appreciate it if you could do that as well. But listen, enough about that. We, listen, I, again, I am thrilled for, for, for today's guest. She is a, a very well-known football analyst. She was a journalist studying at Grand Valley State in Michigan, looking for a way to make it into the industry, trying to step out, stand out in a crowded field. And during the pandemic, she made a mock Zoom of a Big Ten conference call. 
which was hilarious. And since that time, she's gone on to make many other, many other Zoom calls, putting teams in uncomfortable meetings. She has launched an empire that has taken her all the way to Bally Sports right now. Uh, and you can see her taking down teams. She takes down the Bears a lot. Uh, but you know what? We're not going to hold that against her because she does. Th- she, she takes shots at the Bears, but that's okay. So please welcome our guest, Annie Agar. Annie, welcome to the Sick Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. How of course. Thank you, Adam. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm surprised Chicago hasn't kicked me out of the city yet, to be honest. But well, why would why would we kick you out? I cannot think of any reasons. Like, I don't know, Sammy, was there any reason why we would kick her out? Are there any tweets or anything that we would see? Any what is this? Hold on. This is for anybody who's listening to us on AM 1530. I'm gonna read one of Annie's tweets. It says, We're under a big tornado warning here in Chicago, but there's a low risk of any touchdown. Chicago fans are already used to that. That's a little. I mean, the truth hurts, we, though. We were under a, a tornado warning, too. So it was a very scary time. And I decided to use my fear and direct it into a light and positive way. <laughs> Negative That's to the bears, but you know. Gallows humor in a way. And, uh, you know, listen, I have eyes. I've watched the bears' offense over the last number of years. I can't get too upset with that. I mean, I don't know. There there was also, like, I don't know if Matt Nagy was running, you know, slant or curl routes into that tornado to keep us from a touchdown. I don't know what it was. <laughs> I can't get too upset with that, but that's it. But but since Nagy's been fired, you haven't been, you know, you haven't been making fun of, like, perhaps the Bears receiving core or anything like that if, or anything not, like that. No, Adam, never, that is just never. not not a joke. Wait a minute. Oh, look at that. What is this? What is that? <laughs> what is this? A live look at the Bears trying to revive their wide receiver course. Again, if you're uh, if you're listening to us on AM 1530, it's a it's a bear trying to resuscitate or trying to open a trash can. Which, by the way, uh, let's get this out of the way. You live in Chicago. I do. You have the audacity of rooting for the Packers, <laughs> which is fine. Wait, first of all, you're from Michigan, right? Oh yeah. oh yeah. So I moved. I I was born in Detroit. So I moved from a town that hated me. A little bit to a town that hates me a lot now. It was it's been great. Yeah, I think that uh Detroit, I think Detroit just kind of understands where they stand. Yeah. I think Detroit's just kind of like, yeah, we're 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 the Lions. Like we're not we're not good. They don't really have the hatred for the Packers because they're like, eh, Bears fans always feel Bears like hate. we've what well, we I guess if you look at it, if you if you're a, a person of your age, uh you've only known the Packers dominance. Mm-hmm. But like my dad, my dad always would talk about like, I don't even hate the Packers. Like they've been, they're nothing, you know, and he never really can. He always hated the 49ers and he hated Washington because mm-hmm. of the 80s. So Bears fans still have that chip on their shoulder about the Packers and will continue to have that chip on their shoulders uh, for the Packers. So much so, especially since our owner, Aaron Rodgers, likes to rub it in. Um, <laughs> You made the joke before I could. That's great. That's the way to get that out of the way. <laughs> what did you think of that moment? What did you think of the Aaron Rodgers I own you moment? Honestly, when right when he did that, I immediately went and shot a TikTok seconds after that because I knew that was going to be just prime usage for the next week, uh, maybe the next several weeks, um, the whole owning the team. And I think it's hilarious, too, that the Packers are owned by their fans. You know, you can you can be a part owner in the in the uh, team. So it just is a hilarious play on everything because now we own the Packers as well as the Bears. So it's a pretty fun situation to be in. Is it? I don't uh maybe not for you, but for me it's great. It's a lot of fun. I, I don't think it's as fun as you 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 think that it is. <laughs> but how much of it? So okay, I want to talk football. I definitely want to talk football, but I, yeah. I do want to talk about your career because I want people to understand, you know, you were a broadcasting, you graduated from Grand Valley State broadcasting you were interning for a television station so you have you are going into a career of broadcasting i want to that's correct right right yes okay. i was attempting so ever, to i was trying to no 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 you but like the thing is is like you were doing that like you were you were going into broadcasting that was the profession you wanted to mm-hmm. choose i think one of the things that i i admire about what you've done is that we always look and i i get asked all i i I'm going to start teaching at Chapman University this fall a broadcasting course, which I I, I actually need you to guest lecture and and 
I'll, 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 I'll follow back up with you on that one, but perfect. I, I, um, but no, this is one of the things and people who always ask me too, like, how do you get into this industry, which has become extremely crowded over the mm -hmm. last decade or so, everybody's trying to find a way that you have to find a way to stand out and try to find a way to do something that's presented a little bit differently. And I think that, you know, for me, when I was growing up, Jim Rome was a guy who I always looked up to and admired. He was a different, at least out here in Southern California, he was a different kind of guy who was doing something different. We all tried to emulate him. Later on, it was Bill Simmons, who was one of the first national media members who embraced his fandom mm -hmm. and wasn't afraid to show it. And now I feel like what you've done is like you found a creative outlet and now you've used that. And I, I think that's exactly what people should be trying to do. How did this all come about? Thank you. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's so interesting. And this, uh, this is a longer story and ties back to my brother and his whole situation as well. But I've always been taught through life to kind of think of things differently and see things in a different perspective. So when COVID hit, and just a little backstory, my brother has cerebral palsy. So he um, he's the most positive human being and he has to, he, he struggles with everything daily. So he already sees the world kind of differently. So growing up, my, my parents just taught us, you know, this, it's, things aren't easy for my brother. My, my brother's name is John. Things aren't easy for John. So they might not be easy for you, but, but try and find something positive there. So when COVID hit, um, I was working local news and I wasn't even full time. I was just trying to kind of get, do what everybody else did and work your way up the ladder type of thing. And when COVID hit, everything stopped. I was working, um, we were getting ready to cover spring games for Michigan, Michigan State, high school football, everything just kind of stopped. And I was so lost. And I thought, this is this is the end. There's, no, there's nothing to do work-wise. And I got, I just had gotten on TikTok and I got this idea. It was in May, beginning of May. And I did the Zoom call that you talked about at the beginning of the show, where it was just talking about the Big Ten, what they would be doing to get football up and running during COVID. And I, and I, I always, the way my dad and I talk or the way my family and I talk are very sarcastic, dry sense of humor people, as you can probably tell from my Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I use that kind of humor in my videos and thought this might be a great time to kind of lighten the mood because everything we'd been seeing about COVID was down and depressing. And that's just not how I, uh, how I act or how I try to lead my life. So I thought, let's bring a little humor into it. Um, I talk it, when I'm dealing with sports and, and talking with other people, humor is a great way to kind of connect with people because you can establish that, you know, things about the game and you know, things about sports without being braggadocious about it and kind of trying to like fit in. So it's just a fun way for me to talk sports. So did it in a TikTok. Um, people loved it. I was really appreciative of it. And then I just kind of brought that over. To, I did the other conferences first, and then I kind of brought that over to the NFL because that's my wheelhouse. And um, and it just went from there. And I absolutely love it. I think it's what I'm supposed to be doing because, like you said, it's a, it's a great way for me to kind of get my personality out there, I think, in kind of a different way. Um, and it's been so fun. Just the connecting with people has been amazing. So it's been great. Yeah, it's been amazing to watch the rise. I will tell you, too. I don't know. This is um... – Probably one of the best compliments that you can give somebody. I don't know. Maybe or maybe not. Uh, I know like in the world of comedy, like when you go up and you're doing like a set or doing whatever, if a comic walks up to you almost angry, like that was so good. Like I wish I had thought, what, how did how, how did I never think of that kind of thing? <laughs> I got that the first couple of times watching you like, God, that's so good. Like the getting getting past the, the initial jealousy was was difficult for me. Like. <laughs> and then you, then you have to realize like, that's really good. Good, good for you. And then, so um, I'm glad you've been able to run with it and I'm glad. Uh, and I think people don't, it's funny too, because I, I think people don't understand like this is a way of covering sports. Like there mm -hmm. we're, we, we sit in meetings at the NFL network and stuff. And by the way, for anybody who wonders that this podcast is not affiliated with the NFL network. So this is, I'm just, if I tell stories, if I pull back the curtain a little bit too much, I might get in trouble, but I just think it's important <laughs> To let people give some context of like, we're always trying to figure out ways, like how do we connect with people and how do we connect to younger people? Mm -hmm. And yet a lot of times and a lot of media companies will do this. They'll go out there and they'll just put the same ideas out there. Like, mm -hmm. hey, we'll, we'll send a beat reporter out there and he'll do this. And it's like, okay, that's fine. That's been covered. That We've done that for 70 years or 80 years mm -hmm. or whatever it is. And so now we have somebody out there doing something new and it's like, you are covering the sport. Like it's not, it's not any less legitimate than anybody else. You're a, you're a trained you're a trained broadcast journalist who's going out there and entertaining people, and I think that's pretty cool. And I think it's a lot of fun. What about the teams, though? Um, I do know that you you make fun of some teams, including the Bears. Well, you know what? Let's bring up the let's 
Let's let's bring up the is there the let's bring up the Sammy. Let's bring up the Justin Fields one. Let's uh, okay, Justin let's, Fields, let's... Chicagoans. You know what I'm talking about. Shot him a lot. Uh huh. This is you know you hate it. You hate everything about this, but you have to like it because it's in Chicago and you have pride. You compare Justin Fields to a shot of Malort, <laughs> yes, which I, did. I find very offensive. <laughs> um, yes, that was a fun video, this TikTok trend. I thought to do this offseason was comparing quarterbacks to um, alcoholic beverages that they remind me of. And Justin just had, which in all due respect, I'm a big Ohio State fan too, so I love Justin. I absolutely love him. But I had to take the shot where the shot was due. So um, pun intended, by the way. Um, ah. yeah, so he's a shot of Malort, and uh, which I've never had yet. Being in Chicago, people have yet to give me that shot. So maybe that—that's my punishment for doing that joke. I'll take a shot of Malort for you. I will. Uh, I'll be out there on uh, August third. I'm going to be going okay. to Bears camp on August third. If we run into each other, I'm going to make you do a shot of Malort. Okay, that's fair. That, that seems fair. It feels like that. Then, then all debts will be paid, and you can say. And I get it too. Like you've got to. You know, you can like Justin Fields, mm -hmm. but sometimes you have to, you, the joke needs to be made. And yes. like, I I feel like Kirk Cousins is that guy for me. Like, I, I think that Kirk Cousins is probably a nice person. Like, right. seems like, a, a, but I, I can't, I can't stop. I can't stop taking shots at him. I know. What, what I know. was his alcohol? And did you, did you do his alcohol? He was a lime white claw. <laughs> Just very, you know, very bland. And some people don't like it. So there you go. You probably don't like lime white claws. Do you? I don't. <laughs> I've I've always said, and I've said this on the NFL Network, and I always get notes from the producers because um, they'll be like, "Hey, um, you know, like, can you like avoid saying brand names on the air?" And yeah. I'm like, "Yes, but it's funnier when when it's very specific. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's mm -hmm. got to be specific, and of course, it's better if it's like a hard C." Mm -hmm. or a hard K, like that's the funniest sound. Like, hey, like a Coors Light is funny. But I always say Michelob Ultra, because I feel mm -hmm. like like Kirk Cousins, Michelob Ultra, because like Michelob Ultra, who, who by the way, like, not that I'm, I'm sort of affiliated with them, so I feel bad about this, but they like that I talk about them. Mm -hmm. But like Michelob Ultra is fine in certain circumstances, you mm -hmm. know, where you're like, hey, I'm going to be drinking from 9 a.m. through dusk. <laughs> I can't start off with like an IPA or something like that. Right. Like I got to have like a bunch of Michelob Ultras. <laughs> I'm not going to get hammered. It's going to be fine. It'll, it'll surprise. It's not my first choice, right. but if I need right. a domestic lager. It's, it's a marathon, Michelob. not a sprint. Yep. Yes. Yep. Like I gotcha. that is the one. I feel like you'd need a lot of Michelobes to talk to Kirk Cousins for that long during the day too. So makes sense. There are some times that, but there are, there are times when he's cringy. And I'm like, maybe yes. I should, maybe I should make fun of him more. Yeah. I yeah, that's how I feel. That's how I'm right there with you. The Vikings, I think we can agree on this. The Lions, yes. I like I feel bad about the Lions. I I yeah. don't I I make a lot of jokes about them, but I do feel bad about them. Like I, when they do well, I'm like, oh, you did well. That's great. That's enough. But the Vikings, I will endlessly not like. <laughs> Good. And the fact that they are the ones that lost to the Lions last year just cracks me up. I think it's hilarious. So I just love that that whole story. That is, um, that is one of the best things that, that is one, that is another thing that's interesting to me about the NFC North dynamic mm -hmm. is that obviously we've got to, we've got to say that, okay, recently, and I'm looking over when I say recently, of course, I mean, 30 years recently, the, uh, the Packers have done pretty well for themselves. I mean, not, I mean, not as, not as well as you would think for a team that's mm -hmm. had hall of fame quarterback play for 30 years. Yeah. Right. You have as many Thanks, as many Jimmy super Gita. Listen, you have as many Super Bowls as Eli Manning, so that's something you should be very proud of. <laughs> By the way, Jim McMahon has as many rings with the Packers as Favre and Aaron Rodgers. I don't think people talk about that enough. When you talk about wild. Packers quarterbacks with rings, McMahon has two, one with the Packers and uh Favre one, Rodgers one. But in any event, uh my point was is that we will you know, I guess have to concede that the Packers might be the best team in the NFC North currently, not historically, but currently I, I, we have, right. we have one more win than them all time, by the way, that, that CBS put out a list of like, Hey, who that has the most a Bears fan thing to say? I know it is. Gosh. Listen, we, 
we 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 revel in the past as much as we I, can because the future or the 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 recent past has not been so great to us. I know. It's okay though. It, I you know I was going into the season I was seriously thinking that I was gonna have to make, have to make the most jokes about a wide receiving core about the Packers and then you guys came along so it was great. I you know makes me feel so much better inside. Would you though? <laughs> which receiving core would you rather have though? Would you rather have like let's think about this? Like is there a, is there a receiver on the Packers right now who's better than Darnell Mooney? Randall Cobb, Christian, Christian Watson is, is he could have a thousand, uh, a thousand uh, yard potential. I feel like this year. He could, he won't, he, but he could, but he could. And you, well, it depends on if we're doing these separate of their quarterback situation, because I mean, obviously I would take our wide receiving core of Aaron Rodgers, but I do love Darnell Moon. I think Keel Harry could be good this year. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I just, uh, that was a low risk move. Like there is nothing like there is nothing to give up. They gave up a seventh round pick. And and the, yeah. the funny thing about it too is, and I think this is the difference between Ryan Poles and Ryan Pace is that Ryan Poles just played the long con. Like he wanted to yeah. make that move, but he's like, fine. He's like, I'm going to give you a seventh rounder, take it or leave it. The Patriots sat on it for a while. And then finally were like, nobody wants this guy. Like just take him, do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Ryan Pace would have given up a fourth rounder. <laughs> like, here's a fourth round pick for and kill harry and then he would have sold it and then i would have had to have come on this show and been like hey like this is not a bad move a fourth round pick whatever and then you would have been making tiktoks and you would have been finding all sorts of things making all sorts of comparisons and i'd have to to fight off the slings and arrows honestly that's what the ryan and uh and matt Nagy gave me so much content last year that i was so concerned i wouldn't have it again this year and then they go and hire another matt and ryan so it's great I can just I can just recycle everything. We'll see how Everflus does, but I can possibly just recycle all of my content from last year. It's gonna be great. <laughs> it is like one of those things that um, they replaced the cast. Like, hey, they just found another. They found another Chandler and Joey. It doesn't they matter. They somebody off, and it's yeah. <laughs> Here they are. It's the same. That's I know. It's so painful. I will. David Montgomery. I love though. I heard you talking about it before earlier yeah. in the show. I love him. I you know. I think he had a great year last year. I I just your O line's just the worst thing ever. But you know that's okay. <laughs> the worst thing I know. The pro worst foot projected. Worst projected. No, actually, Pro Football Focus has us at number thirty-one. I can't remember who's worse. Not yeah. that it matters. But listen, I'll I'll dig in on that. At least nobody knows who's starting on the offensive line. Like that's I don't know if that that's that's both good and bad. Mm -hmm. Where it's like well. They're terrible, but we don't know who's starting. Somebody might break through. You know, tra uh, I was, I just finally, or excuse me, I, I'm getting around to, to listening to um, Travis Jenkins on o with Olin Krutz. I want to check that out because I heard like he says some amazing things. And I think there's some potential there. And I think that eventually, you know, we hope that they're going to work that out. But no, no, no. We, we got off, hold on. We got off the, we got off the wide receiver <laughs> core we way did. too yes, quickly, way too did. quickly. We did. I feel that that was a deflection. Maybe. All right. So Aaron Rodgers, obviously at, at this point of their careers, I will say this at this point of their careers, and this is, this is a big admission for me. So I want you, Annie, to understand what I'm, uh, what I'm talking about here. And by the way, if okay. you're just joining us on AM 1530 WCKG in Chicago, we're joined by Annie Agar, football analyst for Valley Sports. You know her. If you don't follow her social media accounts, you're you're missing out on some of the best things going. They're hilarious. She takes shots at our team, and that's fine. We still have her. We still love her. We're huge fans. Her agent was worried about her coming on the show. Listen, there's nothing but love here. <laughs> We've had Tom Grossi on this show. We've had you Perfect. on. If we get... We can never get Aaron Nagler on. I'll have the Holy Trinity of Packer fans who I like. And that's it. That's the list. Maybe we'll get three. AJ Hawking here at some point. That's it. That's three, three people. That's who we, we limit it to. But I look at the I look at the receiving cores. And uh -huh. but I will say this. Okay, this is this is what I was gonna say. At this point of their careers, at this point, the day of our Lord 2022, Aaron Rodgers kind of better than Justin Fields at this point of their careers. I'll I'll yeah. concede that. I'll concede okay. that. 
Wow, that's really I, big of you. Thank you. Listen, I a lot of listen, you listen to a lot of people. There's a lot of biased people there. There's a lot of people you listen to shows across the country. A lot of people are very biased. They're very one-sided. Not me. I'm I'm straight down the middle. I call it like I see it. And I know a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't have the the guts to come out and say this, but I'll say it. At this point in their careers, Aaron Rodgers slightly in over Justin Fields. I will say it. And I know the wow. Bears fans might not like me for this. And they might start flooding the phone lines here at AM 1530, or they might start commenting here on YouTube for the sick podcast with Adam Rank. But I'm not afraid to say it. I'm sorry, Bears fans. I have to say this. What I will say, Darnell Mooney of both receiver rooms, better than everybody. Better than Randall Cobb, who, no. Maybe, not even, no. Um, <laughs> who else? Uh, Alan, Alan, Lazard. Laz Alan Lazard, though, I will tell you this. I like Alan Lazard a lot. Mm -hmm. The only guy who I think is comparable, that if you start to include the running backs who catch the ball out of the backfield, I think Aaron Jones might end up as the leading receiver for the oh, Packers yeah. this season. I really like him. I like his game. I'm not afraid of it. I draft him in fantasy football. We do a um, ton of screen passes, too, to get those guys the ball, like Dylan and, and Jones. Yeah, love, that would, I love our system. Yeah, well, you know, I do, too, and I'm glad that that's why we brought over Luke Getze to, to run that system because – and again, if you look at what the Packers did last season, they had Devontae Adams as their number one guy. And I, and again, I'll concede this too. Like, that's way too soon, Adam. We don't talk about Devontae. Over we here. don't want to talk about Devontae. Let's, okay, now let's make it uncomfortable. Let's talk about Devontae <laughs> Adams. How shocked were you? I re Honestly, oh, oh, to make matters worse, I was in Vegas at the time. And I just. For March I, Madness. It was March, March Madness, Madness, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And I just had gotten done talking to a couple people. And I, one of my friends who works in the sports betting industry um, had said there were rumors that he'd bought a house out in Vegas. And yeah. I'm like, there's no way on God's green earth because we pay, we offered him more money. The yeah. only reason he would have gone is because he didn't want to play with Rodgers and or there was some sort of issue there. And then I get a notification. I'm in the middle of the sports book that Devontae Adams is signing a deal with the Raiders and I absolutely lost it. But it's fine. Everything is fine. Aaron Rodgers is he's has like a 66% completion. Uh, uh, great. He, I think he's like 10 in one without Devontae playing. So I'm, I feel fine about it. I think that same with Pat Mahomes and Tyreek Hill, I think this is going to be an okay year for both Mahomes and Aaron without their top wide receivers. Everything is going to be fine. I may be trying to just convince myself slightly, but I do feel confident about this year without Devontae, even though I would have loved him. And I made many TikToks about him leaving and, May or may not have DM'd him several times asking him to come back, but that's beside the point. <laughs> no, I, okay. I do feel good about it. I think Aaron Aaron's great. Yeah, he's 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 gonna be fine. There's a lot to unpack here. What? Wait, by the way, what sports book were you in? Just out of curiosity. Um, which ones did we go to? We went to is it I've super never, super something? The super in, book at uh, the Westgate. Yes. Yep. Why do I know? One. I don't wait. I don't know about sports oh. books. Sorry. Circus, yeah, yeah, you don't know about or circus, circus swim, <laughs> and then circus swim. We went to too. It was super fun. That yeah. was fun. I know the um, I got to meet the owner pretty well, and he's a great guy, Derek Stevens. He's really sweet. Derek, so he that's my guy. Oh, is it really? You're Derek kidding. and I are boys. Yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. He's great. He was great. He's and it, it's guy. so fun. It's so fun. Not that I not that I bet a lot or lost a lot of money at all. That's probably why he likes me because I just gave him a ton of my money. <laughs> Well, he's a Detroit. He's a Detroit guy like yourself. Yeah, yep, yeah. He is so cool. And I'll never understand how American Coney Dog is a Detroit thing. Like I, I'll never under what I don't is know it what it is. Well, it is. I think it's. It, is it more of a Michigan thing or is it Detroit? Oh, I'm sorry, Michigan. Yeah, it is. A I Michigan feel like thing. it's a Michigan thing, but That's yeah, crazy. I don't know. We have a lot of weird Michigan things that people like. Breweries are huge in Michigan. That's all anybody does. Everybody thinks Wisconsin is like beer city, but. No. There's a brewery or a church on every corner in Michigan. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need. Yeah. yeah. To, to live in Michigan. That's what you <laughs> After need. watching Brewers the Lions, you, you yeah. either need to pray a lot or drink a lot. There's no in between. <laughs> hey, the, the Tigers are coming around though. So yeah, maybe at some point. Um, mm -hmm. But I was, it's interesting though. Cause I remember when the whole thing with Devonte Adams was going down, I follow a Twitter account called vital Vegas. Okay. And Actually, there's two. It's either it was either Vital Vegas or Vegas locally. 
one of the uh, it's two accounts that I follow because I like Las Vegas, and I'm a I grew up actually a UNLV basketball fan too. Okay. So yeah, I love the running. Good old good old Mountain West. Right. Oh my gosh, back I re- I remember them being in the Big West like it was really years ago. Being a little kid, you could go because like living in Southern California. They would play like Cal State Fullerton, Irvine, and Long Beach in like these like literal high school gyms. So you would go in to these games as a kid, you know, and you would go and like it was crazy because, you know, you don't know any better, but you're watching Mm -hmm. the best college basketball program in the world. And they're playing this local university in a high school gym that seats like 4,000 people. Do you think about the pageantry of like, Imagine like Kentucky or Mm. North Carolina or somebody. I know Dukes plays kind of in a high school gym anyways, but like going to some local high, it's crazy, but that's why. But in any event, but they were, they were one of those accounts tweeted out the house that Devontae Adams had purchased. And so of course me being me, I retweet this, be like, Uh Hey, for everybody's information, Devontae Adams bought this house and people are like, that's a vacation home. I'm like, well, first of all, nobody buys a vacation home. Like a vac- like an actual house vacation home in Las in, Vegas, yeah. unless you unless you plan to live there. Otherwise, yeah. you'll you'll just rent out a condo. You'll just rent out a suite at the at the Cosmo. Like that doesn't make any right. sense. Right. And all the Packer fans just could not. You always do this, Frank. There's no way he's leaving. This that and that. That is so funny. Oh, I loved it. It was. Oh my gosh! Like, Look at you. I I definitely I feel like I I probably didn't see that because I was probably deep and losing money at that point but um yeah i probably would have thought the same thing because yeah like you said who would buy a vacation home out there no but so you were you were ahead of the curve mm. oh, i was ahead of the curve i was Packers at- fans just were in denial they just didn't want to accept it obviously i would say too i was at uh i was golfing at la quinta at the uh one of the jack nicholas courses when that notification came in on my phone one of my friends you know, we're out there. I was having a terrible round. I wasn't playing very well. And then my friend's like, hey, Devontae Adams just got traded to the Raiders. And my attitude changed 100%. You probably had a heck of a game the oh, rest of that. I don't even remember what I shot. I know I actually shot over 100 because the course is difficult. But it didn't matter. It was one of the best days of golf I ever had because Devontae Adams was traded. And it's interesting, though. I think you're right. I think that, you know, when you look at Patrick Mahomes and you look at uh, Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, those guys are going to go out and they're going to put up numbers. Aaron Rodgers mm-hmm. is going to throw 40 touchdowns. He's going to have less than six interceptions. His passer rating is going to be fine. Mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes is going to be the same. I think what you miss with those guys is that you have game breakers. Mm-hmm. And I think Tyree Kill especially. I think that Aaron Rodgers has done a better job over the course of his career of making players better. Uh, mm-hmm. You think of the you think of the players that he's played with throughout the course of his career. He's had uh, Greg Jennings, James Jones, Jordy Nelson. Jordy Nelson, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, then Devontae Adams passing. I, I know I'm missing a few. Randall Cobb, who's now back. Mm-hmm. But the, the the point is, is that I think Aaron Rodgers has enough equity built up of like he's made people pretty good. Alan mm-hmm. Lazard is going to be pretty good. I have no, I have no issue admitting that. That's that's yeah. fine. I, you can't like we we love to make jokes, and I think both of us probably reside in the comedy comedy side <laughs> of of this. You know, like okay, but I have to be realistic. Aaron Rodgers has done a good job of that. Mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes. Not that I need to see it. Not that he's not good, but when I look back at that game against the the uh, the uh, the Bills in the playoffs, mm-hmm. like that comeback. A lot of that happened because Tyreek Hill had like a, what, a 60, 70 yard touch. Like it was a yeah. five yard, it, air yard of five yards that Tyreek Hill took the rest of the way. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's difficult to replace. So I think for, for Patrick Mahomes, it might, they might lose something there. Whereas I don't think Green Bay is going to lose as much because Aaron has been able to, I mean, a lot of it, I just feel is Aaron Rodgers. Although I do have to ask you, what is it, what does it say? To you, that Devontae Adams took less money to go go, play with Derek Carr. Who apparently is just like Aaron Rodgers, talent-wise. But he had to say that, I'm sure. Um, I I think, I don't know. Well, so when when I first became a Packers fan and, you know, things were going on with Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre, and and there was that whole debacle, 
I, I thought, and for the longest time, I thought everybody, I thought Aaron Rodgers wasn't the problem. Everybody around him was de the delusional Packers fan that I was. Um, and then <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, his brother was on the bachelor. Yeah. Or bachelorette. I don't remember. I think it was the bachelorette. And no, they had right. these it, was, it, was a, it was Jojo. The bachelor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Cause they're, cause they're together now. And they had these hometown dates and his, and his whole family was there. And also my agent used to rep Jordan Rogers. So that's how I kind of found out this whole thing too. But he, Aaron didn't, he didn't want to come. He didn't want anything to do with it. And I'm like, Oh, okay. So maybe Aaron Rodgers is the problem. And now the more things that come out, uh, his dating history, as we've seen, uh, yeah. the people in his circles, he, I think there's some serious personality issues there. And as much as I hate to think that, um, I think that's the case. But then you, there's also the the argument that these people say the same thing about Tom Brady. You know, they're they're just so at such a higher level, they kind of live in their own world, and they kind of have to be jerks to people sometimes in order to establish this top tier, you know, level of play that they have, and and kind of set themselves apart from everybody else. So I get that. But I think you can still be nice. I think there's, yeah. you know, look at people love Josh Allen. He's like a sweetheart, you know. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So I think uh, I think there are some personality issues there, but I'm trying to just ignore that. <laughs> I, it is true though. Like, how do you like? Uh, listen, I I rooted for Jay Cutler for years, so I understand. Yeah. <laughs> how do you do it? How do you rationalize it? Where you just because I again, like even now, like Jay Cutler does stuff, and then like he'll even now do stuff that I don't. I don't know if I necessarily agree with him on certain issues, yeah. but it's like, I still love him. Like I can't mm -hmm. stop. Like there's some sort of unconditional love that you come, that comes with these quarterbacks. Like, I don't always agree with you. You might throw some game crippling interceptions, but I still love mm -hmm. you. Like I does not mm -hmm. It's this blind um, friendship that we have with these teams, which is so fun to poke fun at in my videos too, because people, you know, there's that, there's that, um, the gift that people use or that's my quarterback. Like people would die for these, these people, these men, even if they throw, you know, a game winning interception, uh, they're, they're just, that's their person. And it's the funniest thing to me. Carson Wentz is a big one. People, oh my God. I, I, <laughs> poor Carson Wentz. If I ever meet him, I'm going to have to apologize a lot. Cause I make a lot of fun of him. Him and Drew Locke, both. I make a lot of fun of him, but oh my God. Carson you Wentz. I, open. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I did something with that too. Um, but Carson Wentz, I will never not make fun of. And people, people love him. They will, you know, they will die on that hill saying that he is better than people think he is. You know, he doesn't throw interceptions when it's clutch, but he does. He throws picks when you shouldn't <laughs> the yeah. most. And I just think it's hilarious. So it is, it's very interesting how people will just follow these guys into an abyss, but that's their, you know, that's their quarterback. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> Carson Carson Wentz is a nice guy. I've is met he? him before. Oh my god, that makes it so much worse. <laughs> I know. I wish I could say he was a jerk, but yeah. he is. He's a delight. But you know what? You hear from a lot of like, especially the former players. They they know like they can mm -hmm. sniff this stuff out, and they're like, hey, like they'll they just look and they're like that guy just doesn't have it. Yeah, and just so like, and it's crazy. Like there's guys who um. Not to call out anybody because I don't want to put words in anybody else's mouth, but there's guys who I might or might not work with who played in the NFL who are just like, no, just like absolutely not. Because I'm like, hey, I'm like, because I did, I do predictions, and you probably mm -hmm. know me as the 49ers three and 13 guy. And a lot of that comes down to what I think about the quarterback. And for Washington this year, I'm like, they're not going to win a lot. Like, and I know the Washington fans are after me. And we'll talk, let's get into this. We'll get into that in a second. But it's like, you know, it's like, I, it's funny because like, when I look at that situation, like Washington, if there's a, if there's a, a, a team, a, an organization that's in worse shape than Cleveland, it's Washington. And that's it. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's a two team race. And you put that together with the fact that Carson Wentz is their quarterback. I'm like, I don't see how, <laughs> how do they win games? Your defensive coordinator is making headlines for the wrong reasons. Like there are so many things wrong mm -hmm. with this situation that I, I feel that maybe we're just, I don't know. Well, remember, remember when their stadium, that pipe burst in their stadium last year, yeah. <laughs> I think they were playing the Eagles and that just is the epitome of Washington. I absolutely love them. I love Ron Rivera. He's one of my favorite people. Love him. Um, I think we'll be doing, I'll be doing some content with them soon, maybe potentially um, leading into training camp. I absolutely love him. He's a great guy. We went, we golfed together at Pebble beach, which was. Stop it. 
Oh, dead serious. I, I reached out to him and I said, I wanted to do this new series where I interview guys um, and players and coaches where they're most comfortable. So I said, coach, you know, what are you, what do you like to do? And he's like, well, I love to golf. So I'm, and I'm not a great golfer as I'm sure everybody knows, but I'm, I'm actually terrible. Um, and I thinking there's this, I nice was going to say, golf course. You, you're, yeah, I just, yeah. I'm just no, I was going to say you weren't good at golfing. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> I wanted to verify for everybody listening. Like, yeah, no, not good. She's not she's good. not good. She's not good. Not good. Nope. Ter- terrible. <laughs> um, the, the live tour is not even going to ask me to even come to an interview. <clears throat> um, so I, uh, I said, I'm thinking we'll find this nice course close to home, wherever he is. He's like, well, actually I'm playing at Pebble beach next week. If you want to come out there. And one of the hardest courses in the world. Um, beautiful though. And, but he was the sweetest person, gave me so much good coach. You can see why he's a coach because he really coached me on the course and uh, it was so much fun. It was, it was a lot of fun. So I absolutely love him. And I told him I'll try and take it easy on Washington. And then they go and get Carson Wentz. And I'm like, what? It, this is Can't just the worst. This is the worst. So uh, yeah. So <laughs> I think, but the pipe, the pipe bursting was the epitome of Washington. That whole division just cracks me up. Like I know everybody's calling it the NFC East it, or the NFC least, but it's just so funny to me. Like that whole, that whole division is just, it's got so much personality to it and not in a good way. Not in a good way. Yeah. You know, uh, Danny Dimes, I think is a meme factory himself. Oh, so there's a hundred percent, hundred percent. The QB sneak at the wrong end zone. <laughs> just, oh my God. Oh man. There's just so much good content from them. God, I just love them. Just gotta love them. What are your, so you know, you talk about that. You were talking about the um, the Aaron Rodgers "I own you" moment. You rushed out the TikTok. I mean, do you are you constantly on alert, like twenty four seven, waiting for something to happen and just waiting to pounce on? And, and listen, the NFL provides a lot of this. Are you, are you just always on get alerts on your phone? Like, how does that? How does your day work? Yeah, um, yeah. So I think that's the one thing people might not see about the social media side of things which I think is what sports is kind of trending into. Um, but it's, it's constant. The off season, obviously not as much, but um, I, I'll be, I'll shoot two or three TikToks. So I sit on Sundays, I sit and watch red zone all day because then I do my recap video on Mondays, but I'll be, you know, um, taking notes. Cause we did this live show for Bally's. And then if I think of a TikTok idea, I'll do it on Sunday. Cause that's a great time to get content out because you think most people are watching the games, but nowadays we're watching the game on you know for five minutes and then we're on our phones for five minutes and watching the game like it's a constant thing now so i think the best time to put out content is during these games so constantly on that and then when news breaks like like today with uh, kyler murray i was looking at twitter and i I do i have notifications for Schefter, you um all the you know ian all all those guys to see kind of what's going on as well as I, i don't just look at what they're tweeting out but you have to look at what the fan base feels about it too and that's a big part of my videos is i i can make jokes all day long about how I feel about something, but if it's not relevant to how the fan base feels, it's not going to hit hard at all. So I have to really, you know, dig into these inside jokes that the fan bases have and, um, and kind of get their feeling about certain things. So it's a lot of research um, that goes into these ideas. And then you have to worry about not taking other people's content. So if I think of a joke and then I see it out there already, I'm like, okay, great. Got to go back to the drawing board and come up with something else. So it is a full-time job. (laughs) It's a lot, Um, but it's so fun because then when you get out something good, and people see your video and they resonate with it. I'm like, okay, I can breathe now. Like it's, you know, it took two hours to get that out there and come up with the idea, but it's good. People like it. And then it starts all over again. So it is, um, it's a lot. And, and that's why people say content creators are constantly working because if you feel, even if you have an off day where things aren't happening, you feel like you're falling behind because there's another content creator out there doing something and getting likes on a, on a post where you could be producing the same kind of thing. So um, it's been difficult. It's a lot easier once you get established, I feel like. Because then in certain situations, people will look to you, you know, like they look to you for fantasy advice. Like you establish yourself so much that they're now going to expect you to come out with content when you're ready to. So um, that makes it a little bit easier, but it is constantly being on guard and being ready to, to produce content. Yeah, that's one of the things I I don't want people to think of me for fantasy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Great. It's funny though. But it is, it is um, like the race. Like, the, I don't know, like I feel similar to you like there's almost a sickness to it of like oh my god like i found out about kyler murray you know an hour after it broke and i'm like oh Mm -hmm. and when you think of jokes and things like that that's always one of the things too that i wish more people were mindful of is like if you think that you have a clever joke to somebody's tweet or any sort of thing like just 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 scroll through the just take 
five seconds to look through the replies. I mean, yeah. like, wait, did somebody already make this joke? Because somebody, a lot of times people already have. Yep. And then sometimes the most disheartening thing is when it's somebody that you feel is like, like for me, like not funny, like has made a similar joke. You're like, what is wrong with me? What is yeah. wrong with me that my, <laughs> where are my comedy instincts going? That this person and I came to the same conclusion. Mm -hmm. I don't like, I don't like feeling like that. Uh, but we, you, you talked about Kyler Murray. Uh, you have a, you had a pretty good relationship with the Cardinals. Didn't they ask you to roast? Like, so this is the crazy thing. So listen, I always feel like everybody hates me. Like I was at, I was at the NFL honors and uh, Gooden kissed and that little, the, the guy with the, the eyebrows, Lafleur. Like oh. I, I can <laughs> almost guarantee you they did not like me. They were not, they were not friendly. They were, they were like, there's no re like I'm looking and I'm like, this is, I was trying to catch it. Like James Jones was near me. And I'm like, yeah, I think that, I think your boys with the Packers are giving me grief. And there was a, there was a player there who actually did come up to me. I forget who it was. It was like, it's like, oh, we know who you are. And I'm like, son of a, but, um, <laughs> but they, they in turn do not care for me. Uh, these teams, though, seem to uh, love it. Ron Rivera has you out at at, uh, at Pebble Beach. Aww. The Cardinals wanted you to roast them. Like, what? Is, how is this? Like, are, does every team just love you, or is there any team that does not like you? How's that been working out? That's a good question. I think that's. I think there's a fine line too with what I'm with what I the jokes that I make. Hopefully, because um, like I, everybody asks me, they're like, "Oh, do the players get mad all the time?" And I try not to, I did do a couple, I'll take shots at players when they do something wrong. And that's what I've told them. I'm like, if you, you know, everybody's like, oh, don't, the, the players probably hate what you do. I'm like, well, don't do anything wrong. And I won't make a joke about it. But usually I joke about the teams and the whole situation in general. And I had, um, when I, when Zach Wilson, for, when he was still at BYU, I think it was before the draft. And he, um, I did a, a conference meeting with the, I think it was for the Heisman or something. And I had him come on because it was a Zoom call. I was still doing Zoom calls at the time, and I made some joke about his mom having to log him on to the to the call. So then I get a DM from Zach Wilson, and I thought, oh dear God, this guy is gonna hate me. Um, oh, no. And he and he's like, I showed my mom the video. We thought it was hilarious. So stuff like that, I think you know, I think there's there's a, a fine line. And when I did stuff with ESPN and um, Sunday NFL Countdown, they were like very careful about that line. You know, we couldn't cross it. Yeah. I don't make any injury jokes. I don't make any kind right. of joke that would be distasteful. Hopefully. But, um, but yeah, it's, and what's funny is that people are going to make the jokes about the player. If I, if I get it out there first, I can make the joke first. Right. So the joke is yeah. already going to be out there. I just have to do it in a way that, and I, and I told everybody, I'm like, if I ever meet these guys, I have so much respect for them. Like they're, I love them. You know, I grew up watching them. So of course I'm going to, I'm going to love them, but it's fun to bring this comic side to it too. So it's just a very fine line and I try to be very careful with it, but, <laughs> but the joke, the funny jokes are when you take shots at people too. So gotta get gotta be a big mix now okay i my my computer's at one percent can i plug it in really quickly while we're talking? yeah go do what you gotta <laughs> okay, do okay okay you keep talking i was gonna make a zach wilson joke um <laughs> which has got to be funny because zach wilson's sliding into the dms but knowing everything that we know now uh you're you're sort of too young for him you're I out of his, his age, age range you're, yeah. you're you're out of his age demographic <laughs> so your crisis averted he was probably asking he about trying your, to get to my mom yeah. That's what I was going to say. You was like, hey, Annie, love your content. What's your mom up to? What's her status? Um, uh, so like, funny. Oh, why, why do you ask? Is that, what do you think? Like that, that had to be gold to you. Like this, oh, it was just, this it was is the gold. gift. Like, like what? Like you, you must've woke up to the Zach Wilson news. Like it was Christmas morning. What was that day uh -huh. like? It was so great. So I, I, the first video I did was, um, which ironically, there's a trend on TikTok. And, and posting on social media is all about these trends. And yeah. people always think, oh, you steal content from other people. Not so much me, but, you know, just creators in general. But it's yeah. all about the trend. So you're obviously going to post about what's trendy. And everybody's doing that. And there's millions of creators out there. So the trend on TikTok at the time was this rapper, Young Gravy, who's known, he's, he's 26, who's known for um, commenting on older women's posts on TikTok. Yeah. And, and now it's this whole trend where um, daughters and sons will tag their moms in videos or bring their mom into a video and tag Young Gravy. So I, tweet, I did a TikTok 
saying um, like Young Gravy's favorite team is now the Jets, I'm sure. Huh. And I will be tagging Zach Wilson in every Young Gravy video. And he, he come and he's got, you know, I think, I don't even know. He's like very big in the, you know, younger generation now. So he commented on the video and I'm just like, this is just so scripted so well that he is trending on TikTok and Zach Wilson now is interested in moms and it's just all coming together. It just is. So there's just little gifts like that, that the, that the world will give you on social media that are just perfect. And that was one of them. Like right in the doldrums of oh. right in the doldrums of everything that was going on. By the way, this was a funny thing last week. So obviously this came out last week. I was on Good Morning Football and we were doing a segment where who's the second year quarterback who is going to step something like that. And Rachel, Rachel Bonetta had picked Zach yeah. Wilson. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, OK, I'm glad she's taking care of this. Yeah. So I, I, I stood back and was waiting for the fire. And then she didn't she didn't mention anything whatever and she's like what happened i'm like what happened like during the break and she's like what i'm like did you not hear about this story so she looks it up on her phone she's like i had never heard of this and i'm like <sighs> i thought that's why you would pick zach wilson <laughs> and the fact that, and the fact that she didn't because she's like well why didn't you tell me and i'm like because i trust you like you're funny <laughs> like i just i'm not gonna give you notes like you know what you're doing you've got comedy chops um <sighs> It's so funny. So it was, that, that may have been even funnier. It was like a little, you know, a passive aggressive joke about Zach Wilson. Yeah, I was People like, oh. Was, that's funny. Well, there was, I did get one like little line in about maturity. There oh. was something about me. I'm like, well, Zach, he's got the maturity part in some areas <laughs> down. Um, you know, that's that a was, good one. That's a good that one. That was my little thing. But, um, <laughs> but listen, uh, our time is uh, drawing to a close. I'm glad you were able to come on. This was a delight. Again, we're again. You can take shots at the Bears. I don't take it personally. Oh. Well, I do a little bit. The Madden ratings <laughs> I take personally. Your brand of humor, uh, I do not take personally. Can you just go ahead and tell everybody uh, where they can follow you? And if they're not already, like they're missing out. And anybody who wants to be a hater, like they don't think she's funny. Like shut up, she's funny. Um, oh, you should follow you. her. Where can we? Where can we follow you? Uh, t uh, Twitter is at Annie Agar, A G A R, and then Instagram and TikTok are Annie Agar five, and everything, all the content will be on there. I I cross post a lot too, so yeah, it's it's a fun time. We have fun. <laughs> it is a uh, it is a fun time to to be around for this, and it's cool to see your growth and everything that has been going on with you. Uh, congratulations on the Bally's gig too. That's huge. I know. Uh, listen, I'm a Bally. I, I like it because my I I still watch baseball on TV. So Bally's has a lot of uh, baseball oh, they're good for that. and everything. So, uh, yeah. but anyways, uh, we appreciate you being on. Don't be a stranger. Uh, hopefully the bears don't give you too much to talk about this year. Cause we're going to be so good. <laughs> so you're going to have to be, you're going to have to be like, I can't even talk about these guys, but thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you being on. Of course. Thanks so much, Adam. Anytime. I'll come back anytime. All right. Thank you so much. There she goes. The great, Annie Agar, and we want to thank her, and we want to thank everybody else who uh, tuned in here today for the Sick Podcast with Adam Rank. Thanks to everybody who's listening to us on AM 1530 WCKG, our Chicago home. Uh, we will be back Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, for Take It to the Rank. Carmen Vitali and I will be back. Carmen is going to be a regular on Take It to the Rank. We are going to be breaking down all the latest news for the Bears. We're getting so close. Training camps are now starting to happen. And a quick announcement, too. Uh, the NFL Network on July 30th will be having Back to Football Saturday. I will be in Cincinnati that day. I know, a disappointment for some people. But Kyle Brandt and Kimmy Checks will be in Chicago. On August 3rd, I will be in Chicago at Bears camp. So if you're planning a trip to Bears training camp, if you can make it out there August 3rd, look for me. I will be out there. Look for me on the NFL Network. And, of course, NFL Fantasy Live will be returning. I will be on Total Access. I will be on Inside Training Camp. So plenty of opportunity. So thanks again for joining us, Sammy. Why don't you go ahead and play us out? And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast with Adam Rank on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.